the same population actually that Steve uh, described earlier, but taking a different angle and uh, different needs. And the reason I came to this is that I have been a long time at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And we had uh, previously a number of studies. Of course, Dr. Winover was the pioneer in the studies of colonoscopies and polyps. And we also conducted a large study on dietary intervention to prevent adenoma recurrence. And as part of the effort, we tried to recruit minority participants from the Harlem community to participate in the study. All efforts failed. We could not bring patients from Harlem to Sloan Kettering, although it was a distance of a mile and a half to participate in the study, even though I offered to send them a cab, pick them up, bring them, no waiting, they will go back with the cab, nothing helped. So it was clear that we needed to do something within the community. And this would remind us that cancer is really not a world phenomena, it's not a national phenomena, it's an individual's phenomena. And therefore, our programs have to be tailored to the specific needs of the community, as Steve has pointed out, and to the specific needs of the individuals. So here is Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. This is Metropolitan Hospital. This is uh, in the Upper uh, East Side. This is in Harlem, a distance of one and a half miles. The distance measures by cancer, colon cancer survival is 30%. And here are the data. This is the study that Harold Freeman was very pioneering in. Uh, Five-year survival, 20% in Harlem, and this is the national average in the United States. And these are really shameful statistics because they point out to such a disparity, especially when we are dealing with a disease that we all know can be prevented. So now uh, a large segment of these populations are African Americans. And why did we see these results? There were a number of reasons. Low screening rate, which is a major reason. Presentation with more advanced disease, which is again arises from this. Higher incidence than in the white population, which is very interesting. It is a reversal of what was seen in the 80s. I won't go into it. My interpretation is that because of lack of screening in this population, we are seeing more cancer in them. And this is the genetic abnormality that uh, Cathy Couric has alluded to that was very recently found, uh, a mutation in the P53 gene, which makes the colon cancer more lethal in the uh, uh, black community. So why are there barriers to colorectal screening? We can put a tremendous list here. Socioeconomic deprivation in general is a debilitating phenomenon. It is impossible to project onto a risk which will, and the threat which will happen five years from now, 10 years from now, when today you are at a risk that somebody from the government will come and kick you out of the country because they're an illegal immigrant. So it is against this background of problems that one has to deal with this. There is lack of adequate knowledge, lack of medical uh, infrastructure, we talked about it. A big problem, lack of medical insurance. Uh, there is a large population which has no medical insurance, and of course we cannot ignore this. And then there are the problems of competing medical problems, and we really have to come to grips with this once for all. It's nice to do screening for colon cancer. But we have to think about people as whole people. They have blood pressure, they have hearts, they have breasts, they have other organs. And it would behoove the CDC and the NCI and all this new wave of new government to come with integrated programs for the prevention and control of chronic diseases in an efficient manner. So a woman who is coming to have a screening mammogram and a screening for cervical cancer should at the same time, at the same visit, be introduced to colorectal cancer screening. It is more efficient, more a better cost-benefit uh, ratio, and in general, it is a better approach. 
Then in this particular group, we had language barriers because about half of the population speak uh, Spanish and a lot of them speak only Spanish. And then there are legal concerns because there's a large segment who are illegal immigrants and we are the government and every interaction brings on fear. So some of them wouldn't even give their names. A lot of them, of course, did not have a telephone number and it was really a struggle. Now, how do you manage to get through this? We came across this statistics that in spite of all these problems, about 80% of women in Harlem at one point or another came to a mammography screening center. And we thought this would be a great entry to capture this population. Sloan Kettering has a freestanding facility for screening for breast and cervical cancer in Harlem. Now, this is not unusual. A lot of breast cancer screening in this country is done free of charge. So, particularly for the underserved population, which is, again, maybe it's a model that we need to adapt for colon cancer screening. So, we took on a study, and we received uh, funding from the NCI, to see if the feasibility of creating a community screening program by going to a mammography center to try to define the barriers in this population and to find out the stage pathology of neoplastic lesions and findings on screening colonoscopies. I heard all the praise about how important the doctor is in this whole process. I recognize it and I give due credit. The fact of the matter is that many people don't have a GP, they don't go to a GP, and it's a problem, and we do need to find some alternative ways for some of the patients. So we went without doctors. So when the women came to have their screening mammogram, they met with a college graduate who spoke both English and Spanish, whom we trained to explain what colorectal cancer screening is all about. At the same setting, while the women's breasts were being examined by the nurse practitioner, the nurse practitioner, after the exam, explained to the woman, again, why it is important, and asked her to participate in a simple study, obtain the consent, and at the same time, the woman filled a number of questionnaires, including family history, uh, social issues, economic issues, and so on. Then a colonoscopy appointment was made by a secretary, and an appointment was, before, before the colonoscopy, an appointment was made for a pre-medical evaluation by a nurse practitioner. Now you can see that the doctor is absent from all this until we get to the gastroenterologist when the colonoscopy is performed. So this is a model that does not require the intervention of a doctor, and it is doable. And here are the numbers. We uh, looked at 2,600 uh, eligible women. Of those consented to participate, 23%. Now, mind you, this is a high participation percentage in a formal study in a population like this. And we will go into the reasons why about 2,000 did not. Uh, this completed, uh, 397 completed pre-colonoscopy uh, medical exam and 55% of the uh, participant completed the colonoscopy. Now, when we, when we tried to find why the 2,000 women did not want to participate, it was very heartening to see the answers. And although they did not participate, the answers in the green are, in my mind, positive answers, because they indicate that they are interested in it, they did not want to participate in a study, or they wanted to discuss it with their physician, or there were a variety of other reasons which told us that this woman wanted to do screening colonoscopy, but we needed to help them get over the barriers. And only a fairly small minority had reasons which would be more difficult uh, to uh, uh, advance beyond. So, in spite of the fact that this population struggles with a lot of socioeconomic and health problems, there was a willingness and readiness to participate in colorectal cancer screening. And these are the study participants. Uh, the mean age is 56. 
uh, and you can see that about half of them were black, non-Hispanic, about 35% were white Hispanic, and about 10% uh, were black Hispanic. So it is a minority population underserved, usually poor population par excellence. And here is the crux of the issue of the problem. Uh, the issue of payment and medical insurance. First of all, because we wanted this to be a community program, we went to the community hospital and we did very hard bargaining and we got them to agree to perform the colonoscopy for $300. And mind you, this was before the economic downturn. If we did this study now, it would be $230, but that's beyond the point. So what you can see that more than half of our population had no medical insurance, and most of those who had medical insurance, they were Medicaid and Medicare. Now, of course, we had a moral obligation to these women who wanted to have a screening colonoscopy, and we put them through the process, and we really wanted to do it. To our surprise, 29, uh, 29 women were willing to pay cash, mostly green, and some checks for the procedure. And I think this is very telling. Even this is a small number, it tells you that there was an interest in this. And 45% of the colonoscopies, we had to find philanthropic funds to perform it. And uh, this was an effort, and I'll tell you, it was truly a worthwhile effort. Because these women, when they got the call that now there is a money for you to have a colonoscopy, it was a great news for them. So I think, uh, although this is not the way we do medical practice, this is certainly one avenue that a lot of people of goodwill who are willing to contribute towards worthy causes. This is very prevalent in, in breast cancer screening. There is no reason why we cannot adapt a similar model until such time that hopefully the federal government will move to pay for everybody. So we thought this was quite successful that we were able to do all these patients with uh, uh, philanthropic money. And these are the results that we found uh, during the colonoscopies. You can see that the rate of adenoma findings and advanced adenomas are very similar to uh, other studies. We found the same discrepancy that Dr. Winnower and colleagues reported first from the National Polyp Studies, that when the pathology is reviewed by a GI pathologist, there is some discrepancy compared to the general pathologist in the sense that the GI pathologists tend to downgrade some of the more advanced uh, lesions. Now, uh, we did a survey by telephone uh, with regard to the satisfaction with the whole process you can see that 88% of the women uh, were fully satisfied with their colonoscopy. I suspect that part of this is really a reflection of the good feeling among those who did not have insurance and initially we could not do the procedure. So finally when it came, it was a wonderful thing. So, uh, but, and 95% thought it was a good test in spite of the PrEP and 95% said that they would recommend it. So in conclusion, a community program without a physician referral can effectively increase colorectal cancer screening among poor minority women. It does not necessarily have to be through a breast cancer center. You can go to a supermarket or to a church or whatever, but the idea that you pass that barrier of having a doctor talk to you, and frankly, I don't blame the GPs not talking about it. They have to deal with hypertension, diabetes, obesity, arthritis, a, ver a variety of other problems, people not taking their medications, not having money to buy their medications. So we need to find ways around these problems, and certainly for a community like this, this is one possible uh, mechanism. Uh, so a simple, non-costly, informative measure can be effective in creating interest in colorectal cancer screening, and the navigation system that Steve pointed out to earlier certainly applied here uh, as well. 
the major barrier to colorectal cancer screening as well as to other health issues in this population is uh, uh, financial. And we as a medical community and as a group who is interested in the well-being of others, it is our duty to find what we call creative ways to try to finance those who within the system cannot get the adequate medical care they need. And the polyp characteristics in the black and Hispanic women were more or less similar to those which are seen in the general population. Thank you.